We're talking with Mark Sermon about DML 2012. And, and Mark, your, your theme is on democratizing learning innovation. So what, why don't you tell us to, to start with what that means to you? Well, you know, two of my favorite topics are, you know, democratizing learning and learning innovation. So I think we just mash them up together. And, you know, democratizing learning because I think we're in a tremendous era with the, with the internet, but also just the cultural changes that uh, have happened in the last 20 years from the internet to the, to the Arab Spring, where learning is something that is not an industrial model, or, or we see the, the tip of the iceberg that it doesn't have to be something that's the industrial model where we kind of just pump how we organize learning out of a factory, but rather people are self-organizing their learning, uh, they're shaping how they want to learn, and you know that happens naturally. Uh, that democratizing thing whenever you make information available to people as we have with the internet. But that's now starting to get validated. People are starting to get credit for the kind of things they just organize on their own le learning. So I think we're seeing, and I'm a big advocate for, a trend in democratizing uh, learning. And you know, the, the learning innovation half is, you know, really we're also seeing a, a parallel and related trend in terms of actually just new practices of, of learning, whether that's from how we kind of organize people learning together in a peer-to-peer -peer environment, the same way people make open source software, or is actually, you know, the kind of technology uh, that people are using to deliver learning. And that technology may be to deliver learning where we're even in the same room, because technology itself lets us create things, uh, and of course creating things is a great way to learn. So we're kind of putting those two things together. What about some examples of, of well, projects? Well, I think I was going to just actually jump into an example because to me, I think how I got with the DML people to this is we've been involved in an experiment with a number of the other kind of people who come to DML uh, called around something called Hackasaurus, which has been the perfect example of democratizing learning and innovation all coming together. And what Hackasaurus is, is basically uh, you know, a, a set of learning activities, you might call them workshops or, or classes, um, for teenagers helping them how to learn how to remix the web. And particularly, we think as Mozilla that everybody needs to, to learn how to code, at least a little bit, right? They need to understand at least a little bit the mechanics of the web and how it works. So we're starting that with this Hackasaurus by letting kids go and uh, play with, you know, let's change the logo on Google and, and put Lady Gaga's head there or, or, you know, whatever it is. But as they do something that's fun and playful, they actually learn a little bit about how the web is made and maybe they're going to go a little bit deeper. And you know, that story is interesting because I think it's, it's an interesting learning project, but more in terms of democratizing innovation because we actually got together as Mozilla, who knows about code, with a bunch of people who are doing youth learning activities in New York, and we just started trying out different things in terms of how to teach HTML to, to teenagers. And, you know, the, the kind of typical thing with teenagers is like, I don't care, I don't want to learn this, whatever. And so, you know, we just tried stuff and we tried stuff and, and we, made the, we made some software for it. And then they got their feedback and they liked this, they didn't like that, we changed it. We made some kind of design jams for them, they liked this, they didn't like that. And, and so we were out there trying to get them into a position where they could shape what was going on and shape what learning about HTML would mean. At the same time, like that was our innovation process. They were the innovators with us. The classroom was the laboratory. So I, I think that idea where everybody's a participant, but everybody also is a creator of the learning environment and, and eventually the learning innovation, that's the kind of thing that we want to model because it energizes us, it helps us go forward, um, but it also helps people learn. And so I think we want to explore that theme more broadly of the participants, the massive collaboration, shaping how we reinvent learning into the future. How would you like to see this move forward from DML 2012 onward? Well, this whole theme, I mean, I, I would love to, to see some kind of massive network of, of these people who kind of think of themselves as part of these laboratories. Um, you know, one of the things that's been really awesome is MacArthur and others have taken leadership on something called uh, Hive, or it's just recently been rebranded Hive, which is networks of 25 or 50 different youth serving organizations in a particular city working together on digital learning. And I actually think you can, you know, if you build up more and more of those in cities around the world, you could have a network of 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 you know, de 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 democratizing learning innovation labs. Uh, and I I'd love to see that happen. I would too. Uh, I, and I look forward to talking with you ab ab about that uh, in March in San Francisco. I'm, I'm planning to attend the conference myself and, and I look forward to, others to do so. I look forward to some hijinks. Okay. 
Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Howard.